Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are accessing object properties with variables. Another use of bracket notation on objects is to access a property which is stored as a value of a variable. This can be very useful for iterating through an object's properties or when accessing a lookup table. Here's an example of using a variable to access a property. So they set the variable of dogs equal to an object. You see this bracket notation? So the key is Fido and the value is Mutt. The key is Hunter, and then the second key is Hunter and Doberman. Third key is Snoopy, and then Snoopy's a beagle. So we can say the variable my dog is equal to Hunter. Hmm. So my dog is equal to, so that we're just establishing my dog as Hunter. So Hunter um, is, a, is the string that is saved as my dogs. And then so here we're saying dogs, and then my dog, which renders out to Hunter, which is going to be, um, Re, re, um, the, my breed will come out to um, Doberman, the string Doberman. So my breed is actually set to Doberman. So if we log my breed, we get Doberman. So that's a kind of confusing way to explain how you can store strings and then utilize them as um, keys in objects. Another way you can use the concept is when the property's name, it, name is collected dynamically during the program execution as follows. So here they've got some object with prop name as John. The function is prop prefix, and they're passing in a string. And they're saying, we set the, uh, uh, you know, the variable name, the letter S, is equal to prop. And so we return S plus string. Um, so S is equal to prop, and then the string that's passed in. So it's going to be prop, and then the rest of the string. Um, some prop is equal. So then now the, finally they're going to say some prop. Instead of some object, some prefix, some prop is equal to prop prefix, so this guy, so, um, and then plus name. So we're going to run through here. Name is passed in a string. There, s is equal to prop. So we've got str and pro and the variable s here. And then we add the variable s, which is prop, to the variable string, which is passed in from here, name. So this would render out to, um, uh, yeah, prop name. And if we were to console log some prop, uh, so we have the name, prop name here, and then some object, prop name is here. Oh, okay. And so does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. This becomes prop name. And then what we're doing is we're creating this whole thing is just to create a string that when it's passed in, it's going to say prop name. And then that's going to be how we pull uh, John from here. I hope that makes sense. It seems a little confusing. Um, and so I'll go in, after I, we do the answer, I'll go into a little bit more depth about how I think they're trying to say this. Um, note that we do not use quotes around the variable name when using it to access the property because we are using the value of the variable, not the name. Use the player number variable to look up player 16 in test object. So in test object, player 16. So we're looking for Montana. Then assign the name of the player variable assign that name to the player variable. So we want to have, so here we have player number. Um, you know, just from looking up here, what they're trying to do is say, set the uh, player number is equal to, what the heck? Hmm. Player number variable. So player number. So we're going to set player number equal to test object dot uh, 16. Now, I don't like that I can't see what's going on here, so I'm going to console.log uh, player number. And you'll see, okay, so it comes out to Montana, and that's what I want. So we've assigned the player number is equal to 16, even though I think that's kind of weird because, anyways, and then test object, then assign the name to the player variable. So yeah, this is the player variable here. This is player variable. And we want to assign the name to the player variable. So the test object. Um, oh, actually, I think that they want us to set this equal to 16. And then we go test object is 16. However, I'm not confident. If we console log the player, it seems to me obvious that you want to have the player number be the number, which is 16. And then you want to have the um, player 
be Montana. These are old football references. Unitas, Montana, and Namath, they're all, I think they're all Colts players or something. But anyways, 16, 16. So I think that this is right because I'm logging out the player number is equal to the number 16, the integer 16, and then Montana is equal to the player name. So let's run the test, see how that works. You should be using the variable player number in your bracket notation. Oh, okay, so what they're saying here is they want to use this existing variable in here. You'll see that it really doesn't make a difference, but for this exercise, it makes sense to think about it this way because um, they're trying to explain to you that you can use um, variables um, that you previously set as keys on an object. So yeah, hope that helps. Uh, if I run the test, I think they'll pass now. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. And uh, well, let's think about this a little bit more. Um, how would they, how could I explain this in a bit other ways? I think they're doing a good job. At the end of the day, what they're saying is the 16 can be a key and the key can point, um, we can save that as a variable and then we can use the variable pa by passing it in to the object in this fashion. Now, a lot of programming does sort of things like this because it makes it so your code can be reusable. It's a little bit um, hard to see the value of doing stuff like this, but this is actually really valuable to understand. So if you don't understand entirely what every single line of this code does, I think you should just go back and do it again and just reset the all code. You press this button and just cycle through it and do it over and over again and maybe create your own test object. Like um, there's Ian object, Ian's me. And then I'm gonna make a thing. I could be like name, Ian, um, country, USA. And then if I wanted to, um, here I can have it be like name. So this is gonna come out to be my name here, right? Um, now, if I wanted to, I could set very, uh, Ian name is equal to Ian, or no, n name variable or something like that is equal to name. And then uh, I could make it like uh, Ian, the name of Ian, right? And then we could set this to Ian object. And then, in per and then instead of passing in parentheses, I can just pass in name variable. And then you'll see it spits out my name here. If I were to change the name variable and have it be equal to country, it would actually, it should print out name variable, Ian object, name variable, country. Name country. The name of you. Oh, I see what's going on. This needs to be country. And then this will pass in USA. Okay, so that's what, what, what I was thinking. That's the reason it wasn't updating because I was using the, uh, I was actually just uh, explicitly writing it out. Anyways, so yeah, this is a, a way to kind of practice. Just come up with your own objects and see if you can uh, repeat this code using a uh, variable to pass in your string object. Anyways, I hope that that wasn't too confusing. This is very important stuff, so it's really worth a while to really understand this. Um, Blowing through this portion, just getting the right answers isn't uh, going to be the best idea. It'll just cause you problems later. So the more you can dig in and really understand this and write it syntactically correct, the uh, better off you're going to be. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.